morning, booktubers and booktube viewers. My name is Erin Rogoff. I have been reading all morning, and you know the phrase, April showers bring May flowers, right? Well, I have been reading outside all morning, and I have been enjoying it thoroughly. The cool breeze, the nice flowers, the honeybees, everything. I just love it. So, since I have been reading, I wanted to do a May 2019 book haul, starting with a book by John Green that everyone seems to love, The Fault in Our Stars. This is a young adult fiction romance novel. It is a standalone. It is about this girl named Hazel who has incurable thyroid cancer, and one day in her cancer support group she meets this boy named Augustus whose osteochroma caused him to lose his right leg. And as they both deal with cancer, they fall in love, and they find that there are new eras even at the end of all things. And I just think that's so beautiful and so sad. But I am giving this a shot, even though there isn't necessarily a happy ending. So anyway, fellow booktuber Jesse the Reader raves about John Green's books, and he even met John Green at one bookish convention. I don't remember what it was called. And I saw no reason not to buy this heart-wrenching tearjerker. And even though I'm not really one to like books with a sad ending, John Green's books are really growing on me. Paper Towns remains my favorite of all, but I am giving The Fault in Our Stars a chance, and I am actually really enjoying it. So another book that I have been reading is Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. This is a young adult fiction, science fiction, fantasy novel. It is a part of the Monsters of Verity series, and there are two books in the series, This Savage Song and Our Dark Duet. I have them both. And in the, the series, um, as the world begins to break, this girl named Kate Harker hunts monsters with an unrivaled skill, and August Flynn, at one point, wanted to be human. But as the war begins and the monsters start to win, who will turn out victorious in the end? So I was sold on that, and I actually started following a bunch of authors on Instagram months ago, and that's how I found Victoria Schwab, and now I am so into her books, and I have no regrets about it. I mean, why would there be? It's a book. It's a great book. <laughs> and another book that I got this May was Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan. This is, like, the highest of high fantasies. This rivals the skill of Game of Thrones. And, oh my gosh, have you seen the end of Game of Thrones? Oh my god, I was not expecting that. I'm not even going to give any spoilers, and do not comment any spoilers down there. But anyway... Back to books. Uh, th this is part of the Wheel of Time series. In the series, there are like 14 books. The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, The Dragon Reborn, The Shadow Rising, Fires of Heaven, uh, Lord of Chaos, Crown of Swords, The Path of Daggers, Winter's Heart, Crossroads of Twilight, uh, Knife of Dreams, The Gathering Storm, The Towers of Midnight, and The Memory of Light. And I have the first seven books. I am not even halfway through the first book, but I am sucked into it. I mean, like, the first book, the beginning is just like Lord of the Rings, and oh my gosh, I am obsessed with Lord of the Rings. Like, seriously, with Lord of the Rings, I watched it at, like, five years old, playing Barbies and saying, okay, instead of Barbie goes to the fashion show, Barbie goes to Middle Earth to destroy orcs and bring the ring, the one ring, to the fires of Mordor and everything, and so I was a little nuts with that. But anyway, I'm so into the Wheel of Time series, and in the series, um, in the lands, in this book anyway, in the lands of Shale Ghoul, the Murdral swords are made, and the sky isn't a uh, part of the world, and in the land of Solidar, the White Tower represents a legation of King Randall Thor, and he holds the throne of Camelin, and an unknown visitor comes, and he is able to bring change to the world as we know it, but it's only the beginning. And since there are 14 books, there is so much more story to be told, so I am so into the series, oh my god. And then, there's one more thing about this. 
as skilled as George R. R. Martin's become in his Song of Ice and Fire series and the Game of Thrones series, I was looking for a series less brutal towards women and less um, women as brothel workers and more warrior maidens, but still a part of the high fantasy realm. And so when I came across the Wheel of Time series back in February, I got the first few books for my birthday. And I have to say a shout out. Thank you to my parents and my brother. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Thanks, Christopher. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> and then I also have A Crown of Swords, also by Robert Jordan. Another high fantasy novel, part of the Wheel of Time series. And in this book, Elaine, Avinda, and Matt find a way that might return the world to as it once had been, resurrecting natural weather in a place of an unending heat wave, using the bowl of Terangril, which is, like, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but more is to happen in this simple journey to a mystical thing, and... So when I bought this series, I just absolutely loved it. I am so into it. I cannot express how much I am into it, but I can't wait to get the next seven books once I get a paycheck from my next job. Okay, halfway through this video. <laughs> Another book that I got is Graceling by Kristen Kishore. This is a young adult fiction fantasy romance novel. It's part of the Seven Kingdoms series, and in the series there's Gracing, Graceling, Fire, and Bitter Blue. And in this book, Katza can kill with her bare hands since at a young age of eight years old. She's actually been a Graceling, which is a rarity in the normal folk of her world, where, gif where a gifted few are born with extreme skill, and Katza is the niece of the king, as she is graced with killing, and she is made to work as the king's assassin, and no, this is not describing Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. And Katza expects to follow through with this assassination, but she doesn't expect to fall in love with Prince Poe or find out a secret that could kill every kingdom in her world. And Common Sense Media refers to Graceling as satisfying but violent fantasy that is a debut for teens. And I'm all about fantasy, fantasy violence, and though I'm 22 and not a teen anymore, I still love, love, love teenage and young adult fiction Oh my goodness. Another book that I got was Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. And I read the book in like an hour and a half. And then I told my mom about it and she wanted to read the book. So I, so I lent it out to her and now she's at work. So she has the book. So the book will not make its literal debut in this video. But I just have to say that this young adult fiction poetry novel that is a standalone, is an amazing, sad, and empowering book. It's a series of poems on experiences of violence, abuse, love, broken hearts, and feminine, feminine, I can't say the word, but you know what I mean. And it is so worth the read. Oh my goodness. Everyone knows that I like dark poetry, like Edgar Allan Poe poems, the Crank series by Ellen Hopkins, and I wanted something like the Crank series, so when Milk and Honey showed up, I bought it on the spot. And I have not regretted anything. Oh my gosh, I love the book. I want more. So the next time I go to Barnes Noble, I'm definitely going to get more books by Ruby Cower. Lacey, quiet. My co-star is over there growling at another dog. Okay, another book that I got is Field of Bones that I actually Shush! That I actually fin <gasps> Shush! That I actually finished reading last night. This is a murder mystery novel. Hold on a sec. She's not shutting up. Anyway, this is Field of Bones by J.A. Jantz. This is part of the Joanna Brady mystery series. This is book 18. And the books in the series are Desert Heat, Tombstone Courage, Shoot Don't Shoot, Dead to Rights, Skeleton Canyon, uh, Rattlesnake Crossing, Outlaw Mountain, Devil's Claw, Paradise Lost, um, Partner in Crime, Exit Wounds, Dead Wrong, Damage Control, Fire and Ice, D Judgment Call, The Old Blue Line, The Remains of Innocence, No Honor Among Thieves, Random Acts, Downfall, and A Field of Bones. And in Field of Bones, which is now my new favorite 
murder mystery novel. Joanna Brady gives birth to her daughter, Eleanor Sage, on the night she wins her third election as sheriff of Cochise County. And when she goes on maternity leave, bodies show up in a literal field of bones, and it's discovered to be a dumping ground. And so that's when Joanna shows up with her team of police to put the serial murderer away. And the other day, I was actually shopping with my family at the supermarket, and where we go, there's a book kiosk where we all meet up after we're done shopping with, like, when we go our separate ways. And so I was waiting there, I was the first one there, I'm like, okay, la-dee-da, what do I do? And so instead of going on my phone, which I, like, never really do, I decided to pick up this one intriguing book and started to read it. So as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. And my dad comes up to me, and he's like, you got a book? I said, yes. He said, are you into it? I said, yes. And so he said, I'll buy it for you. So, thank you, Dad! <laughs> Another book that I got was Desert Heat, also by J.A. Jance. This is the first book in the Joanna Brady mystery series. And in the desert town of Bisbee, Arizona, Joanna Brady lives with her husband, Andy, the sheriff of Cochise County, and their nine-year-old daughter, Jenny. And everything shatters like the green glass sea when someone kills Andy, making it look like a suicide beneath the hot Arizona desert sun. The next book I have is Tombstone Courage, which is the second book in the Joanna Brady mystery series. So in this book, Joanna Brady has solved the murder of her husband and has foiled a very large drug trafficking ring. And now Joanna wants to take over as Andy's place as sheriff of Cochise County. So she runs, wins, and becomes sheriff. And she turns out just like her father. And I just think that that's really cool because I want to be a lot like my dad, too. So I was, like, connecting with Joanna on that. And then Joanna sets her mind to, be to becoming a real sheriff, not just a paper pusher. So she goes to this event mentoring program thing and someone is killed. And so Joanna must put all of her skills to the test. And so what shall we do next? And I'm planning on reading through the entire series, which is a total of 18 books. So this will last me maybe three to five months, maybe? I mean, I have read 28 books this year, so I will see what happens next. And then the other book that I got was Shoot, Don't Shoot, which I have on my Kindle. And since I'm filming on my Kindle, I can't show you the video. I mean, the, uh, the picture. But... Shoot, Don't Shoot is book three of the Joanna Brady mystery series, and Joanna Brady is now the sheriff of Cochise County, and she knows there's a lot more to do on the job than just doing paperwork and eating donuts, which I'd be happy to do. <laughs> so she places herself, oh wait, I'm describing book three. Think of book two as book three, never mind. Another book that I got was Speak by Laurie Halsey Anderson, which is another book on my Kindle. And it is a standalone, and the tagline, Speak up for yourself. We want to know what you have to say. That is a draw-you-in tagline, because I certainly want to know what Melinda has to say about her freshman year at Meriwether High School. Melinda is a friendless outcast because she um, put an end to a an, an end of the summer party, and no one will listen to her truth, which is that an upperclassman raped her at that party, and no one believes her, no one listens to her, and so she really doesn't know what to do. She doesn't want to be scared for the rest of her, her high school experience, so what will happen next? And high school is hell for so many, and I had hell at high school too, but not like that. I was, like, being harassed and emotionally tormented and whatever, but I implore you to speak up. Oh, my goodness. When you stick up for yourself, yes, it is going to be scary as hell, but in the end, you are going to feel so powerful, like you reclaimed that power in yourself that you didn't know you had or you thought that you lost. So I want you to get justice for yourself. So if you were attacked or hurt or tormented or bullied or harassed or God knows what else, 
speak up. I will stand behind you. Oh my goodness, I cannot express that enough. Sorry for getting so emotional there just then, but I wanted to end this video on a good note, so I got P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This is a young adult fiction romance novel, and it's part of the To All the Boys I Loved Before series. And I have the first two books, To All the Boys I've Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You, and the third book is Always and Forever, Lara Jean. And in this series, 16-year-old Lara Jean has a habit of writing love letters, to crushes she's had in the past, and before going away to the University of Scotland, someone finds her letters, and it's just getting heartsick and embarrassing, Unfeel unplanned feelings ensue, and all the boys that Lara Jean has had a crush on read her letters. And to note, I am not a fan of straight-up romance novels, but I made a promise to myself to read at least two chapters of a romance novel every day, and I started reading That Summer by Sarah Dessen, so I'm planning to read the To All the Boys I Loved Before series next. So let's see if I'm into this or not. So guys, anyway, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to my booktube channel. And if you liked this video, like below, comment on what your favorite summer reads are, and just have fun this summer, okay? I mean, go to the beach, go camping, go hiking, go on vacation. Just have fun, but be safe. That is the most important thing. And what's the danger in reading? Seriously, think about that now. So anyway, that is it for today. I hope you liked this video. Have a good afternoon, everyone.